Okay, so welcome back to reaction video number two. Um, last week we got some very, very interesting responses. Quite controversial video actually about Jordan Peterson um, trying to prove that you know Karl Marx was a Satanist. There was a lot of Jordan Peterson lovers um, in the comments section, you know, just going ham and trying to prove why Jordan Peterson is absolutely amazing. It's hilarious. If you haven't seen um, all the comment section, go over and just and just read it. I don't know what the YouTube algorithm is doing, to be honest. It really is struggling <laughs> to find the right um, audience for this. It's just pissing people off. But like, you know, it's exposing them to alternative ideas, to the dribble that Jordan Peterson spits out about Mark. So in that vein, let's keep going. Today I've picked um, an interesting one. It's called, you know, What Mark's Got Wrong. It's on his official channel. It's about six years old, but you know, it's got 400,000 views. So, you know, a lot of people have, have watched this um, and probably liked what it is that Jordan is spewing out of his mouth. So let's get into it straight away, shall we? One of the things that made Marx wrong was Marx believed that capital would flow into the hands of fewer and fewer people and that the dissociation between the rich and the poor would become more extreme as capitalism developed. It's, that's a pretty good observation. Um, I don't like how he's already framing it as, you know, rich versus poor, because that was not how Marx described things. He described them in class relations. So you have your bourgeois classes, specifically your capitalists. Your industrial capitalist was mostly what he was talking about in his time versus the proletariat being the industrial sector of the working class or at least the most conscious section of the working class but you know let's not get this let, let's not let the specifics of this get in the way of a good story this is what jordan peterson does well and like so many things that mark said that's it's kind of true it's kind of true in that is that a concession? Okay. Uh, like, he, you know, he's basically saying that Marx has got it right, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly where he's wrong. The distribution of wealth, and in fact, the distribution of anything that's produced follows a Pareto pattern. And the Pareto pattern basically... Anything that's produced. That's, that's what he's talking about here. Is that a small proportion of people end up with the bulk of the goods. And it isn't just money. It's it's anything that people... Marx was not just talking about money. Marx, actually, this is where people are very wrong about, like, you know, Marxian analysis of things. It's got nothing to do with money. It's got to do with capital. And money can take the capital form. But, like, money and capital are not the same thing. Produced creatively ends up in that distribution. Okay, so creative production is basically what he's talking about here and like if he's just broadly talking about creative production that is not what marx was talking about marx was not talking about you know just creatively producing things or just general producing within any society he's talking about the economic production so the productive forces and the means of production basically all the things that people produce to help sustain life within that community and that's actually the economists call that the Matthew principle, and they take that from a statement in the New Testament. And the statement is, to those who have everything, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, everything will be taken. And it's, it's a map of the ma manner in which the world manifests itself, where human creative production is involved. And the map seems to indicate... Creative production? What are you talking about? That as you start to produce and you're successful, the probability that you will continue to be successful or accelerate increases as you're successful. And as you fail, the probability that you will fail starts to accelerate. So, you're well, is this part of his self help mantra, or are we analyzing Marx here? Marx was not talking about like production generally, like creative production when humans do things to better themselves and all that sort of stuff. His analysis really comes down to the economic mode of society. And that's what he was talking about when he's talking about productive forces. He's not talking about just generally being creative and like what that means for the individual. This was a society wide analysis, very, very broad. He talks about society um, and the productive forces and the productive relations within that society as a totality. 
not on individual levels. And you know, this is what Jordan does a lot. He takes things, I think, out of context, or if he doesn't take them out of context, he uses analogies to kind of describe his position that have absolutely no bearing to what, at least what Marx was talking about. He does this all the time. And like it, that's either done out of out of two things. It's out of it's either done out of ignorance, which I don't think he is ignorant on this topic. It's it's the other. It's being directly manipulative. If you can frame the conversation kind of over here and like make it about something that's completely unrelated to prove your point, that is just a manipulation and a distortion of somebody else's argument. And like, you know, he should be ashamed of that. Peterson because you know as an academic and an intellectual for him to just like frame conversations in a manipulative way is wrong it's shameful your progress through life looks like this or like this something like that and the reason that Marx was right was because he noted that as a feature of the capitalist system the reason that he was wrong is that it's not a feature that's specific to a capitalist system it's a feature that's general to all systems of creative production. Marx never that said that. Marx never said that. And I don't think anyone's ever made the claim that he was just talking about how you have an unequal distribution between rich and poor or the capitalists and the rest in a capitalist system and only in the capitalist system. Look at historical materialism. He must have come across this before. It, like it, it's, it's an analysis of all the different phases in society based on the mode of production at that time and how that provides um, for a class of people who own or control the means of production and generally get all the benefits associated with that and then a mass of other types of classes underneath that that all relate to the mode of production and a big majority of that being the working class that produce all the value and and this is comes up uh, time and time again throughout all historical modes what is he talking about when has anyone ever made the claim that this only happened what what marx sorry has ever made the claim that this only ever happens under the capitalist mode this is this is dribble like he's just like diluting the conversation again and just feeding people with with nonsense to prove his point i'm disappointed and so it's like a natural law and it's enough of a natural law by the ways that the distribution of wealth can be modeled by physical models using the same equations that govern the distribution of gas molecules in a vacuum. So it's a really well, profound, that sounds relevant, it's a fundamentally it? profound observation about the world, way the world lays itself out. And it's problematic because if resources accrue unfairly to a small minority of people, and there's a natural law-like element to that that has to be dealt with from a social perspective because if the he talked about inequality this. becomes too extreme, then the whole system will destabilize. And so you can have an intelligence. Did he just acknowledge that? Did he just acknowledge that? He just acknowledged and then started talking about mitigation, the mitigating the effects of, of that. Okay, so he just mentioned the fact that, okay, in the capitalist system, that because of the concentration of wealth that happens and the general inequality on an, on an economic basis of the system, that it becomes unstable at the top. And so you need to have mitigation measures in order to remedy that. Now, there's two things there. One, that's an astounding acknowledgement that he's talking about how unstable the capitalist system is. That was one of Marx's biggest gripes with capitalism, is that it is incredibly crisis prone. And as it continues, those crises increase, increase, and the system becomes more and more unstable. That is a general Marxist critique. And he's just picking that up and saying, yeah, let's just run with that assumption. And so what is he proving wrong there? Like, I don't actually know what his point is. The other thing he talked about was mitigation. So he's talking about, oh yeah, but like if it becomes unstable, you can mitigate that. That is wrong, and I think it has to be proved by history that that is wrong. Look at the way that the industrial society started in in Western nations. Um, like there was a horrendous working conditions for people, and then they fought for working rights and better conditions and all that type of stuff. Um, they they won those things, 
And then all of a sudden, when you come after World War II, um, after people have you know, kind of lived off the fruits of all of those struggles, then neoliberalism comes along and completely erodes the workers' movement and offshores all the production capacity in the West, basically, to developing nations, where there is no regulation on working conditions and there's no good living standards um, and structures around to protect the workforces in developing nations. Capitalism continually finds ways to erode mitigation measures. So you can have, basically he's saying you can have an unstable system because you know you can mitigate that. Well, no, you can't. Capitalism will find a way. It's just what capital does. It finds the path of least resistance. It, it does that naturally. And that is not a kind of, that is not a, a good and evil thing, which is what he will try and make it about. Like, you know, it's a, it's a moral battle here. That's just what capital does. It finds the path of re least resistance. So if you're going to mitigate stuff over here and make it hard for capital, then capital will, will go somewhere else where that doesn't exist until the entire system is changed. So capital, so capital can't find the path of least resistance. And that's why we're revolutionary because you can't just mitigate Mitigate your way out of the problems with the instability of capital, which he has pointed out and agrees with. Wow, Jordan, you're on fire. Production into the hands of a small number of people. Now, the other reason, however, having said that, the other reason that Marx was wrong, there's a number of them. Oh, make a one list, is man. That even though creative products end up in the hands of a small number of people. It's not the same people consistently across time. It's the same What, so that makes it okay? And that's not the same thing. You know, like... But, like did he ever say that? Water going down a drain. Did Marx like, ever make the point, it's just like, oh yeah, well, you know, there's only the exact same people all the time um, that are making, you know, this system, that are profiting off this system, so that's evil on that basis but like as long as they keep changing hands you know every generation or you know on a daily basis then that that makes the system okay like what point is he making there oh it's an unstable system but as long as we refresh the amount of people that are in total control then everything's fine okay, we'll look at the spiral it's permanent you think well the spiral's permanent but the water molecules aren't they're moving through it and it's the same in some sense with the credo distribution is that there's a one percent and there's always a one percent but it's not the same people. It's and in the stability of it. Don't, don't you love how he just like you know like the analogies like it confuses people, and like that's how he proves his point because people are just like wait wait what did he just say? Culture to culture, but there's a lot of movement in the upper one percent, a tremendous amount of movement, and one of the reasons for that movement is that things get large, and then they get too large, and then they collapse. And so, in 2008, when the politicians said, too big to fail, they got something truly backwards, as far as I can tell. And that was, it was a reverse, the statement was reversed. It should have been so big it had to fail. He just proved what Marx was going on about in terms of the crisis prone nature of capitalism and its inherent instability. Like, what, what is he going on about? That whole video was named What Marx Got Wrong and he spent that entire time agreeing with Marx on stuff. Like, ah, oh, let's just listen to the music. It's the best part of his stuff. Mm, lovely. Great choice. All right, look. I, look, I don't even know where to start there. The, the video was called Why Marx Was Wrong and he just basically spent, I don't know, the last five minutes um, providing pretty, you know, off the mark analogies and then ultimately agreeing with Marx that like the system has its flaws. Now, this is part of like this series of content and, and tirades by Jordan Peterson is part of his larger agenda to discredit Marx. Now, I think that comes from a couple of, a couple of things like um, I do think that there is a level of jealousy. Uh, Marx was an academic, just like Peterson, and he has been, he's basically one of the most influential figures in, if not the modern world, then like the whole of human history um, in terms of a literary sense. And like, you know, Jordan Peterson thinks of himself as quite the academic um, and probably, you know, wants to knock Marx down a few pegs because, you know, he doesn't 
really like what he's saying. Um, and as a psychologist, he's, he deals with kind of a lot of people that obviously have issues. Um, and as a self-help advocate, he deals with a lot of people that are kind of, you know, you know, not living up to society standards, probably a little bit pathetic. Um, and like he sees Marxism as a general excuse that people use to blame their problems on the system instead of looking, you know, at themselves and wanting to kind of improve their own lot in life. Um, and so he doesn't like Marxism in that regard. And so he kind of blames Marx for all of that. And I think that's wrong. And like you've seen in this video and the last one, he gets some shady characters in and uses some pretty flimsy analogies to try and prove his point. So I'm going to take it upon myself to kind of debunk him debunking Marx because he's not doing it for a solid academic reason. He's just doing it because of some personal vendetta. And we'll get to the bottom of that. Um, exactly what that is the more we go through these ones so look if you haven't already please like and subscribe and please remember for all of you out there i am you are we are a mystery